So much to get to on today's show as it's yet another Victory Monday for San Francisco. Six wins in a row. So if you love seeing the Niners beat down on Brady and the Bucks, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. And good news is coming up on today's 49ers report. Welcome into the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. Chase Sr. here with you. No matter where you are or how you're tuned in, greatly appreciate all of you for making today's show a part of your day. And I appreciate Roan for sponsoring today's 49ers Report, the most comfortable, breathable, stretchable fabric known to man on the commuter shirt that I'm wearing right now. 20% off of your order if you head to roan.com slash chat sports and to the promo code chat sports. We'll tell you more about them coming up around the corner. So really the good and the bad from Sunday's game at Levi Stadium. The good, San Francisco came through with the performance that has caught the attention of Nationwide, especially with the way that Brock Purdy played. The bad, it came with the serious cost because there were so many injuries that took place in the thumping of the Tampa Bay Bucks. It was a win that made a lot of people realize San Francisco could be the number one team in the NFC. But again, the injuries, not great for the Niners as they are banged up on a short week with an opportunity to clinch the NFC West in Seattle on Thursday night football. Of course, we'll be doing a watch party for that game. Here's this from Adam Schefter, and this is really unfortunate for a guy they called the Barnacle because he's been able to just latch on the Niners roster Time and time again over the last several years, Dante Johnson activated to the 53 active game day roster yesterday and unfortunately for him suffered a season ending torn ACL so he is now going to be out for the year. And then we deem this MRI Monday here at Chat Sports because all of these MRIs were set to take place on Monday and the results just came in. Debo Samuel ankle in and a Brock Purdy oblique Kevin Givens knee injury Kerry Hyder Jr. ankle ailment Ambry Thomas also with an ankle and Dante Johnson that torn ACL but there is some good news here to get to on the injury front and let's go through the fury of tweets that just came down just moments ago and are breaking it down in real time here on the show Matt Barrows with this, hearing that it's an MCL sprain for defensive tackle Kevin Givens, his prognosis still being determined, but a sprain MCL is better than some of the alternatives. Here's where it becomes great news for San Francisco. Debo, whoa, that injury looked awful. The play call, certainly questionable, but thankfully it looks as though Debo could make his return here in the regular season. The 49ers announcing as a team that Debo Samuel suffered an MCL sprain in his knee as well as an ankle sprain, not a high ankle sprain. So he is expected to return at some point in the regular season. That's huge because this guy last year was a first team all pro and has a profound impact on this offense in the last couple of weeks since getting banged up earlier in the year. He's really returned to the form that we saw make him such a special one of one player back in 2021. As for Kevin Givens' MCL sprain, that has been factually determined, expected to be out for a few weeks. And Brock Purdy, Glock Purdy, who was making it rain yesterday against Tom Brady. We'll talk about that performance on the tail end of the show. You don't want to miss that breakdown. The 49ers listing him with an oblique and rib injury. He is day-to-day -day and has an opportunity to partake in that game in Seattle to help San Francisco clinch this division on Thursday night football. As for Kerry Hyder Jr., Shanahan believes that he could have finished the game in a close game. We saw that he really struggled to get off the field during our watch party, needed some assistance. That's a good sign for him because San Francisco is so banged up at defensive tackle. More good news on that front. Javon Kinlaw is expected to rejoin the team in practice after this upcoming game against Seattle, reinforcements potentially on the way. Before we continue to keep it moving here on today's show, a reminder to subscribe. And with this video, I think we're going to hit another monster milestone. And if we do, we'll celebrate it on our Tuesday live show of 70,000 subscribers. 69,860 of you. Keep it locked in with the largest and best Niners news, rumors, and analysis show out there, 140 people remaining to get the 70,000. So if you want videos every single day, 
and you want to be informed on the Niners, just hit that subscribe button right now. 49ers Report is presented by Roan. They are really redefining how the dress shirt is made. And you think about dress shirts, right? Myself, a lot of you out there, you've struggled with this over time. They can be, dress shirts can be too baggy, loose fitting, long, and they just don't look good and they don't feel good. And many of us have really run into that predicament over the years, finding the perfect fitting dress shirt. You know what? That's why I love Roan. That's why I love the commuter shirt. It's not too long. It fits really well. And the material is so comfortable, but so durable. I know I'm going to be rocking this shirt for a really long time. That dress shirt due for a radical reinvention. Roan, thanks to all of us, stepped up to the challenge. Their commuter shirt, the most comfortable, breathable, flexible shirt known to man. And here's why. Mobility, folks, is everything. Because we're movers and shakers here at Chat Sports. And wearing this shirt, it allows us to do just that. Roan's comfortable four-way stretch fabric provides breathability and flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy what life throws your way. Your commute to work, hanging out at chat sports, or hitting up the golf course to play 18. It's time to feel confident with a wrinkle-free shirt without the hassle of having to iron that thing. With Roan's wrinkle release technology, wrinkles disappear. So head to roan.com slash chat sports, promo code chat sports to save 20% off your entire order. That is 20% off your entire order when you head to R-H-O-N-E dot com slash chat sports and use the code chat sports. From my seat, with four games left, San Francisco can survive without the services of Debo Samuel. But man, is he a special player who plays the right way. And I think that's why you saw the team come around him on the cart. And I think that's why you saw him get so emotional when he went down with that knee injury. And now you see why Debo wanted to get paid. Heading into this year, if he didn't sign that contract extension, no financial leverage or security beyond 2022 with the base salary under $4 million. And he was able to secure that deal to give himself, himself that long-term financial flexibility and that injury. If it was serious, maybe Debo was never the same again. At least for him, he was able to secure the back. And how do you hate on Debo? The guy plays hard, rugged, physical, with passion. And his teammates absolutely love him. And he's kind of a silent assassin because he's not that guy who's really that too outspoken. I love Debo Samuel. He's part of the fabric of this organization. And I'm so thankful that he could make his return before the end of the regular season, if not hopefully in the playoffs. The controversy of that play call, a lot of people wanted to criticize Kyle Shanahan. And a lot of people are saying that wasn't a design run in between the tackles. But think about the scenario. You're up multiple scores, you're around midfield, and while the run was designed to go to the left and he cut it upfield in between the tackles, there's a lot of bodies there. It's totally different than getting Debo out to the perimeter where you don't have to worry about all the defensive linemen and all of the offensive linemen and all of the bodies there. And Debo was trying to fight for extra yards. That's how he plays the game of football, and he shouldn't have that a different mentality in between his ears because that's what makes him a special player. But the play call, Kyle, all I want to see is you use your running backs in that situation. Hand the ball off to Jordan Mason. Let's see him play a little bit more, especially against Seattle, who likes to play a physical brand of defense. Pick and choose your spots with Debo and get him out to the perimeter. Don't run him amongst the trees in the trenches because that leads to injury to guys like Debo, to guys like Trey Lance. That's really the controversy with that call. So to wish him a speedy recovery, type Debo. Whoa! In the comment section right now, he is certainly one of one. Now, as for Christian McCaffrey, so Jack, this is Christian McCaffrey here. This is why I believe that San Francisco can really survive without Debo Samuel is because of the play of Christian McCaffrey. And what he did in this game was absolutely extraordinary, and I think without Debo, you're going to be able to see Christian McCaffrey play a lot of wide receiver like he's done with San Francisco. He's a versatile playmaker who can do a bunch of things, and that'll help absorb the blow of not having Debo. 14 carries, 119 rushing yards for CMC against Tampa Bay, two catches, 34 yards, two touchdowns. So with McCaffrey and his utilization in this offense, I think you'll see him more at wide receiver, out wide, and in the slot he caught that touchdown pass from Brock Purdy playing outside wide receiver and maybe used a little bit less as a running back without Debo to try to conserve him and it's easy to see why the Niners made that trade 
for Christian McCaffrey because of the elite special playmaker that he is. Running the football as he did yesterday, surpassing 100 yards. And then how about the catch that he made from Brock Purdy on the touchdown reception from him lined out wide. The fact that he's running after the ball here and Brock Purdy put the ball in a great placement right behind him where only he could make a play. He switches his hips, turns his body around, corks himself around, makes the catch, and then gets two feet in bounds. Like, that is really, really special stuff. And as long as CMC was able to stay healthy, I said the trade was going to be worth it. That's why I liked it when the trade was made that night as we were live for several hours, and it's easy to see why the Niners made that move. As for Brock Purdy, Matt Mayoko saying the 49ers listing him as day-to-day -day with an oblique and a rib injury. And this is really important for the Niners because trying to win the division with QB4 is not ideal. Trey Lance was QB1, Jimmy Garoppolo was QB2, Brock Purdy is QB3, Josh Johnson QB4. So is it Josh Johnson time if Purdy can't go? Let's hope that we don't have to see that. Let's hope that Purdy can play because the play of Purdy has been absolutely ridiculous. He's taken the league by storm, and a lot of people want to compare the start for Nick Mullins to the start of Brock Purdy. Similar stat lines for sure, but the makeup, the moxie, the confidence, the gamemanship from Brock, he just has a little bit more swagger to him as compared to Nick Mullins, and the college pedigree a lot better. 16-21 with Tom Brady watching on from the opposing sideline, completed 76% of his passes, 185 yards and three touchdowns total. Two through the air, a good throw. To CMC, as I said, as well as to Brandon Ayuk. Good pump fake on that play by Purdy. Love his awareness. And then he also had that rushing touchdown. And the takeaways from Purdy over the last seven and a half quarters or so, really, really impressive. Now, you don't want to overreact to a young quarterback with a small sample size, but it's hard not to be impressed with what Purdy has been able to do. He's identified blitzers in the box. He's checked and change plays at the line of scrimmage. He's thrown deep balls down the sideline, which Jimmy Garoppolo hasn't been able to do throughout his entire NFL career, and that's added a level of explosiveness and a change of pace to this offense. I think that Purdy has thrown well with anticipation. He's not afraid to get popped by opposing defenders and still deliver the football because this dude is tough. He'll take a hit in the chest. If that means having to throw the football downfield to come through with the big play, he has solid mobility, which is something that I saw while scouting him at Iowa State. He's made some Tony Romo out of structure type of plays where he's kind of twirled out of the pocket to extend the play. He had one of those where on a play action was on the boot to the right faked a throw kind of and had a little shimmy toward the sideline, stepped up inside on the pocket, juked the defender, then lofted a nice ball to Debo Samuel. Jimmy Garoppolo just simply can't and hasn't made those plays and teammates absolutely love the rook. Nick Bosa, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, Trent Williams, the coaching staff, Kyle Shanahan, Brian Greasy, they speak glowingly of Brock, and it's not just to instill confidence. It's because they think that this kid is playing excellent football, and he has a lot of potential. And I want to continue to see the development of Purdy. I want to see what he can do going into a tough environment with the 12s on hand in Seattle where the place is going to be raucous. Seattle would love nothing more than to spoil the Niners' hopes of winning the NFC West. And San Francisco, on the other hand, would want nothing more and wants nothing more than to go into Seattle and in the opposing visitors' locker room to celebrate winning that division. Now, I will say this. We'll see what Purdy does beyond these seven and a half quarters because at Iowa State, there was the saying, Brock is going to Brock at some point. He was a little bit erratic, but as of right now, the takeaway is very, very impressive for Mr. Irrelevant, the final pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. Opportunity to win the NFC West on Sunday. Our watch party is going to be absolutely fantastic and riveting. Huge game on Thursday. So to get ready, type F Seattle in the chat. Appreciate all of you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. March to 70,000 subscribers is on. We'll see you tomorrow for our live show.